we've spent the morning meeting with most of the dignitaries that will be attending the Dominion Alliance Summit on DS9. In the last two parts, we learned their motives for attending their government's stance on the Herc and a possible Dominion Alliance, and also delved into the lore blogs that covered just how the attendees came to be here, many of whom have history with Deep Space Nine. With everyone addressed and the hours ticking by, the word is finally given to make our way to the DS9 conference lounge from Admiral Quinn. Quinn here. The summit will begin soon. I'd like to go over what you've learned. So the Klingons seem opposed to a Dominion alliance, the Federation and Romulans are for it, the Ferengi will lend their support to whatever eliminates the Herc, and Bajor will do what is right for Bajor, which is probably in our favour. And the Cardassians are actually all for an alliance too, but everyone is strained by the amount of refugees that are being displaced by the Herc attacks. Interesting. The Klingon and Romulan positions were somewhat predictable, but I'm surprised by the resilience of the Cardassians and Ferengi. I'm also concerned about the Gamma refugee issue. We'll need to work with the Bajorans to manage the situation here. We should get to the conference room. Report to me there when you arrive. I mean, I'm right outside, I could just... Uh, yes sir. We arrive on time and find everyone else awaiting the official go-ahead. We've not had a chance to talk to everyone, like Martok and Wayun yet, but then another attendee catches our eye, Captain Kumarki in the far corner. It makes sense for her to be here, after all the Kentari and Lucari are among those first worlds affected by the Zenkethi's purge on the Herc. Well, everyone's here and no one started shooting. Could be worse. That was a joke. Take a moment to relax, speak with the others. Things will be serious soon enough. Admiral, the last conference I attended had no cool assassins. There was plenty of shooting. Martok, good to see you again. Uh, what are your thoughts on all of this? Jem Park is more of a political creature than he was. Well, when we were both a lot younger. He's not willing to face the truth. There are Klingons who fear the Herc, hiding behind politics and rules. Grethar waits for their worthless souls. Know this. There are still Klingons who know where their blades belong. We will not dishonor our ancestors and ignore the Herc. We will fight them to our dying breath in the name of Kalos and the Empire! I like the way he's shouting about Jimpok while Jimpok is literally two meters behind him. Martok don't care. Of course, we can also take the time to chat with Wayun, whose stance is going to be obvious. What the founders say, the Vorta do. So I'm hoping with Odo in charge, he'll be amiable. Greetings. It is agreeable to see you, especially outside the confines of Facility 4028. I'm glad we had a moment to talk before the summit begins. I trust you relayed everything you learned from us to your superiors. If I may be so bold, I hope that you conveyed a need for cooperation with the Founders as well. At least in matters regarding the Herc, if not in all things. I advised cooperation with Odo. As for Facility 4028, that was covered earlier in our playthrough when we released the female changeling from custody. We say a quick hello to Kira too. Hello again. I spoke with Odo about the vision we discussed. He's agreed to clear a mission to the old sector. Opaka, the former Kai I mentioned, lives there now. So this is all to do with Kai Opaka and your visions? I believe so, yes. The Kai has a condition that has prevented her from leaving until now. Odo has provided us with data that could lead to a cure. If there's a chance, I'm willing to take it. Her wisdom could help us all greatly. I realize this is a lot to take in, but I hope I can count on your help when the time comes. I mean, if Starfleet clears it, you will have my support, Eminence. If you'll excuse me. The next person on our rounds is Kumaki. I'm glad you're here. I've been feeling conflicted lately. All the worlds we saved from the Zenkethi were also home to thousands of dormant Herc. By saving those planets, we also saved a great number of enemies. Those very enemies have since attacked a number of worlds, including my own. We can only make the decisions based on what we know at the time. Given that, we also saved billions. And I don't know about you, but I have a limit on how much I can sacrifice to save before it becomes pointless. Besides, you tried to help and it went haywire. Welcome to my Tuesdays. Remind me to tell you about the time I accidentally assimilated Romulus. At least this way we saved billions of people. You're right, of course. If only there'd been another way to resolve things. If the Zenkethi would have listened to reason. 
I suppose we should place our hope in working together to stop the Herc. I can't help but think there's a path to peaceful resolution in all of this. There's got to be some way to end this madness before more lives are lost. Perhaps there is. One party needs to be sincere in talking things through or nothing is gained. So, as long as you keep up that mindset, we'll be good. If I can have everyone's attention... Thank you. Let's begin the summit. We have a lot to discuss. Thank you all for coming. By now, you should be aware of our tactical situation. The Dominion, as you know it, is on the verge of collapse. We've withdrawn to our core systems, and the lines are holding for now. Without your help, the Herc will win the War of Attrition. What about your outer systems? We're receiving refugees here, from those areas. We have one fleet left, Admiral. That's hardly enough to defend the entire Dominion. I'm failing to see how this concerns the Empire. The recent battle here is a sample of what the Herc can do. If you think they'll stop at the wormhole, you're sadly mistaken. Need I remind you that the Dominion came to your aid in the Iconian War? I seem to recall Klingons placing high value on debts of honor. Or has that changed? Mind your tongue, Changeling! I will not be insulted! Those are our Federation scouts from the other side of the wormhole. Admiral Quinn to Ops. What's happening? We're under attack, Admiral. It's the Herc! Reading Herc boarding parties! Multiple decks! Already? They've concentrated in the damaged pylon. Or processing area. Ah. I need you to get to that damaged pylon section and lock it down before the Herc trigger an explosion that could wreck the station. On it. We immediately dart out of the conference room and take a turbo lift to the damaged pylon. Within its inoperational spire are the refineries and storerooms that once stripped Bajor of its mineral wealth. This area is still mostly unshielded from the previous battle, so of course this would be where Herc forces first land. We move through an initial storeroom before being confronted by the hull breach itself, with a crashed ship poking through. Okay, keep an eye out for Dranzuli. This is Hales and any non-Dominion player's first encounter with the actual Herc, so at this point we were expecting our swarmers, not these towering, freakishly quick, spindly things. The Herc Vakyat Aggressor is the foot soldier of the Herc forces and is often accompanied by swarms of attendants, the bugs that the Zenkethi call Dranzuli. Their disorientating shriek abilities severely mess with us if we remain in the focus of their sonic screeching and we see a lot of sound-based abilities alongside them with their germanium shells, which makes me think there is some form of resonance going on here, like how Tholians communicate. Their powerful frames too are stronger than they appear and can hurl us around with mantis-like strikes. It's not long before my entire team is down, so I have to go around with reviving them one by one. While Bazaar takes care of the smaller ones, I finally managed to fell the last two Herc, and set about reviving my teammates. Bad news. The hangar security shield is on the verge of collapse. If it drops, you'll get pulled out into space, so let's make sure that doesn't happen. You need to stabilize the power relays and recalibrate the shields. There are consoles near your position you can use to do this. Everyone hear that? Good? Awesome. I am a fan of oxygen, so let's see to this quickly. We head up the pylon from the hangar floor using these industrial stairways, only to find more Herc in here. Clearly they wasted no time on spreading throughout this pylon. 
unfortunately, this time with the entire team and some well-placed plasma grenades, we're able to roast them quickly enough. We find one of the active control panels we'll need to stabilise the power relays up here, so we set to work on that. Okay, that's one down, now for the other. Nice work, but it's not over yet. The Herc have moved into the ore processing area above your position. There's a lot of unstable uranium ore in there. If they damage it, it could ignite and set off a chain reaction that could destroy the pylon. You'll need to make your way up there to secure the area and restart the safety systems there. Ah, the aforementioned explosion Quinn mentioned. Cautiously, this time, we head upstairs. Mm. Looks like the access system in this section was reset. You'll need to rotate the central column and extend the bridges in order to reach the next section. This is a strange design. The central pillar has a bridge on it that can only be brought to one level at a time. Probably something like a drawbridge to keep the original workers here locked in. Teraknor was, after all, once a Cardassian mining camp. There we go, the access walkway lines up and the bridge extends, allowing us to the other side. We continue on our climb up to the safety systems. However, teaming down the walkway alerted by the movement comes another swarm of Herc bugs. Once again, we employ plasma to burn out as many of them as we can, but as soon as the flames extinguish, one comes charging at us with a scythe-like strike. Progress from this point slowed down a fair chunk because we kept our head on a constant swivel for more. After extending a second walkway, we spot some of the upturned crates of Iridium ore and the dust, disturbed either by the explosion or the Herc. Okay, you're almost in the clear. The safety systems for the area are currently offline. You'll need to restore power to that section and reinitialize the safety systems to get everything back online. Yes, understood. Just put me in the right direction. All right, the safety systems are reinitializing. They should be up and running in a few minutes. Nice work. Hold on. I'm picking up multiple Herc life signs in your area. They're converging on your position. Oh, lovely. I need you to defend that section from the Herc until the system comes online again. If they get in before that happens, they could knock it offline again, or worse. No sooner does Nog finish explaining than we are ambushed by more Herc. It's like they are literally crawling out of the walls. Also, yes, I am using high-yield explosives near Iridium ore, but hey, the, he said the safeties were back online now. The waves of insects do not stop here, and we have to hold out for two minutes against them while the safety systems reinitialize fully. But eventually, after employing the Nakul shield we picked up and creating temporal rifts using our temple agent gear, we survive the onslaught and stand covered in insect gloop atop the broken pylon. Yay, we saved DS9. And then Nulia calls in to remind us about the Herc fleet currently swarming around the station. She offers to beam us out. Well, no time for a shower because the Herc are also targeting indiscriminately, including all the refugees and civilian ships. The Herc are attacking the station and several civilian vessels in the system. I've sent ships to assist them, but I'm concerned our forces are spread too thin. I'd like you to work with those ships to protect the civilians while the rest of us defend the station. First Dukan Rex will accompany you as a combat escort. Okay, we'll free up the civilians first. Hopefully they can get out of here. Dukan Rex, thanks for the assist. Starfleet vessels, this is Quinn. Protect civilian targets. We open fire on a large swath of the Herc vessels, sending up all salvo of torpedoes at various targets. The smaller swarming craft we fought before are not very powerful, so it won't take much to bring them down. The larger vessels, however, pose more of a problem, and DS9 is still recovering from its prior attack. At least this time, however, we have the Dominion here already, as well as allies in the form of the Cardassians. We pass the Bortus skew itself on its own mission to defend the station, while we set off to find another group of civilians to save. Them. 
Yep, well, that got their attention. Together, the Armager and Dukan Rex's ship managed to destroy the hurt vessels assailing a group of refugees. Plotting the course for Beta Z. May the prophets guide you. Our job is far from done, however. Each group saved, we turn the odds in our favour. This Herc assault, although sudden and definitely a surprise attack, seems limited in scope and size so far. Oh, nice that work. was close, but I'm afraid they are Thank We're you so much. We're picking up vessels and they're heading our way. The station's weapon systems are offline. We need a few minutes to get them up and running. Until then, we're a sitting duck over here. I've asked every ship in the sector to regroup and prepare for battle. Let's hope it's enough. Yeah, that may have been on me. I tempted fate by saying there weren't any reinforcements. Honor your ancestors! Fight now! And destroy the herb! Concentrate fire on their capital ships! Chief! I need those systems online! System online in 60 seconds. Don't let the frigate swarms get behind you. Just a few more seconds. DS9 joins the fray. The battered station, survival of the Border War, the Second Klingon War, the Dominion, the Third Klingon War, the Iconian, and Zenkethi powers up its photons once again and showers the sporadic hurt vessels. At least now we have a central point around which to rally that can fight back. Bolstering our allies with our tactical data, the Enterprise F swoops overhead, deploying a series of quantum torpedoes against harrying her forces. The RRW Lissette is evading swarmers by cloaking and decloaking, risky but a viable tactic. And all the while, Dukan Rex's ship shadows us, picking at our targets as we fire on them too. And suddenly, there are no more targets. Space falls blissfully quiet once again. That was the last of them. We're not picking up any Herx ships on long-range sensors. For now, at least. I think it's clear that the Dominion is prepared to work with you to stop the enemy. I hope the Federation is ready to do the same. Agreed. I can see you've put a lot on the line here, Ambassador. Hmm. In the meantime, our fleet will do what it can to keep the Herc on our side of the wormhole. Tell Admiral Quinn not to wait too long to make a decision. This will reach the Federation faster than anyone would like, believe me. Oh, don't worry. I do. And with that, this very long mission is completed. Within the game, the past three episodes were only a single mission, but with so much content in them, I felt I needed to split them up to do them justice, especially since it was just, as has been called in the comments, such a love letter to DS9, bringing back all the cast as it did. One thing I do like is that it avoids feeling hokey having everyone come back. Because of how the series ended, Rom is here as Nagus. Odo is a Dominion ambassador, which means he has a Wayoon shadowing him. Nog is here alongside other Federation captains because of his prior experiences with this area, the Nagus in DS9. 
and we are here because trouble needs a magnet, and we were the first ones on the lines of this mystery that turned out to be another ancient menace of a long lost alien race. Garrick is back, representing Cardassia, Kira is of course the Kai, and the Klingon's history with the Herc being their first contact species means that of course Jimpok and Martok are going to be attending a conference about them. If there is one thing that has been proved today, however, it's that we do fare a lot better when we are working together. This fight, despite us arguably being on a worse position than we were when we fought the Zenkethi, actually went a lot better. This again was a sneak attack by the Herc, but one we were arguably more prepared for. So I think it's fairly clear that we're going to be working with the Dominion against this threat. The Herc threat is real, and we can't afford to let it expand throughout the galaxy. There will be resistance to getting involved, but I believe we have no choice. The Federation must render aid to the Dominion if we're to have any chance of stopping the Herc onslaught. In the meantime, Kai Kira of Bajor has requested a mission to the Innis system, and Ambassador Odo has authorized it. The Kai has asked for our assistance on this, she asked for you by name. Whatever she needs, make it so. Yes, she alluded to such when we met her earlier. But that'll have to wait until the next part of the Star Trek Online story series. I've been Rick. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.